I'm going to start with our number one product, and it's called Hood Loop. Okay, now, just so we have clarification, everything that Hoodman does has hood on the front. It's like McDonald's. It's the McFries. It's the McRib. It's the Mc... So get used to that. But the Hood Loop is literally... I'm going to bring it up into the frame, and this is an item that really has become an iconic piece of gear for the still photographer and for the videographer. So there's a couple mm. of uses here, which I'm gonna show you quickly. All it's doing is, what I always say is, it's creating a dark room over the LCD screen. Because like I said earlier in my timeline, in 2001 or two, they came out with LCD screens, which was brilliant. They were like the size of a postage stamp, but they were, they were there so you could see and play back and be able to see composition, and histogram, and you know, focus. All that stuff could be taken and, and it marked, but guess what? You can't see it because you're outside. So it fell right into our grasp again, into our realm of possibilities to make this happen. And how that happened is we would go to trade shows and like a lot of our products, people would just ask us, hey, what can we do with this? We get our best product intros from people who are out in the field doing it. So the loop literally as it sits, has a lanyard on it. Now the lanyard can go over the neck, over the head, sit there with maybe several other things that you already have over the neck and over the head. So that's something that we have another solution for as well. But I think historically over the neck, I have a camera, a shot is taken. I say, you know what? I don't know if I have that in focus. Oh gosh, yes I do. And I'm on the brightest beach. I'm on the, the desert sand. I'm everywhere. This creates a dark room. Basically, it's instant dark room, which is like what I like to say. Um, the physicality of it, they last way too long. <laughs> it's, it's no planned it's out. Business. Yeah, planned <laughs> out for lessons is not happening here. So, but the product itself will give the people that use it a whole world of appreciation for what's inside of that. So now you're looking at it, and it really just serves a simple purpose. But you can find these and they're almost infectious because people like if you're at a, at a venue and you guys go out to a shoot maybe or something and there's a lot of people around, you pull this out, 10 people ask you, what, what is that? What, hmm. let, let me try that. You know, so it's just, it's just word of mouth. And we've been selling these since 2004. The first one was like this big. It was tiny. But we've been selling them since 2004. But it's such a utilitarian product that once again... I'll, I'll talk about the details of it. You, you guys get the concept. It's giving you a, yeah. a glare-free viewing area anywhere you're at. And why not be able to have that? Because there's a lot of important information on here you need to see. And not back at your hotel room, right? The night of. You want to know now because that sun's dropping. It's your last day. Whatever the baby. You're on the Serengeti. Whatever the heck it is. You want to have this device. So the actual device doesn't really hook on yet. So it's not meant to be stuck on. You want to use it, drop it, continue. Use it, drop it, continue. That's how it's done. So it's not in the way when you're coming back because you're looking at this to look through your viewfinder, at least on DSLRs. We'll talk about mirrorless in a little bit because that's a whole other world. Yeah. But yeah. the little guy here has a, right here on top, is a plus or minus three diopter. You see those little notches? This will rotate. And it's very heavy to the grip because we don't want it to move. We didn't put a, an actual piece in it to hold it. We just put in a serious amount of grease and it holds it in place. So that's your plus or minus three diopter. So it covers the majority of people's correction that they need. And most people need correction. It is linked to three lenses. Okay. It's more difficult to make something one-to-one -one than it is to magnify. Magnify is simple. You just put one lens in there, convex lens. It just magnifies whatever. It distorts the heck out of it. But to make it one-to-one -one is what we want to do. Keep it one-to-one. -one, keep it looking in here. And the one-to-one -one aspect ratio of it is because you can always increase magnification in the electronics of the camera. Don't do glass against electronics. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Keep it one-to-one. -one enlarge here and then use this as your loop and your viewing device 
I just say that because it's it's, it's a big deal. Because the first thing people ask about is, does it magnify? Because they think it's a loop. And traditional loops magnify. It's like, no, it doesn't. You magnify it in the camera. And they finally, that concept has finally been grasped, I think. Mm. People understand it and they do whatever they want to do. But the material that this loop is made for or made of is co-molded plastic and rubber. So it's a combination. It's impregnated into, into the rubber and it gives it that soft tactile feel. It doesn't have any harmful edges to it or marring effects to your back of your camera. It's very, very soft to the touch and it looks really rich. I mean, if you see this, it's like a matte finish. You see cars that look like this now. They have this matte finish all over the place. But one last thing on it, this has two little latches. And we did this on the last, this is a probably fifth generation. This is the optical portion of the program. So that's the smart end. This is the end that doesn't have to be so smart. But what it does is it sizes. Let's say you bought this three years ago and all of a sudden you bought the light latest camera and the camera's LCDs have grown. You can change this out and put this on and now you're not, once again, no more obsolescence, which is, we kind of did it ourselves. <laughs> But it, it gives you the ability to grow with sizes. You can also go with tomographs. I've had people 3D print because 3D printers are pretty pre prevalent. I send them the files. They can print one out and put it onto a five-inch monitor. So when they're outside. So your video people would want to do that. Um, the loop itself, as it sits, can nest if you're traveling. So that's another reason why it splits in half. So we can you know, reduce the footprint. But all in all, the loop, pretty simple device complex in what it does and i have one other little accessorizing this in a second here but any questions or anything else on this with what you see oh i forgot one thing this little guy this remember this this is a quarter 20 female okay so you're going to use this later on if you want to expand the potential of this okay so anything else on the uh, loop well uh I just wanted to say, yeah, uh, yeah. Fan, fanboy moment. I've got my one here because I absolutely, yeah. I absolutely love it, and I, I'll tell you why. So I, I primarily shoot uh, landscape or outdoors. Yeah. I do some product stuff, but um, sure. when you're doing any sort of detail work, especially uh, you mentioned by the coast, uh, if you're doing small rock formations, anything like that, I, I'm an absolute uh, sucker for getting everything right in the camera, composition, yeah. everything. And if you're dealing with any of that work, these are really genuinely invaluable once you've had one you will yeah. you can't you, you ask yourself why you didn't do it before because and i don't want to go over the top but <laughs> i I'm, I'm not very easily swayed by things but this really kind of changed my mind about it and, oh, and having great. used one now for a little while I, I really do love it so i think anyone out there who's doing any sort of detail work macro especially uh, where you've got focus points you've got to be really yeah. careful with uh and or just being in those bright environments it's a real Correct. It's game changer. Even with modern cameras, with the LCDs, I, they're still very difficult. I'd lead workshops and you see clients kind of, you know, trying to. Well, it's, and it's your connection to the camera. Exactly. And yeah. it's just, it fails every time. So you yeah. really get frustration. But that's why when these show up on a, a group or a outing, I, I usually have like, if you were leading and I give you two or three of these just to, to kind of sprinkle within the group and let them use. And then at the end of the trip, you have to pull them back from <laughs> No, but I think that's the kind of that's the growing we've had with it. So it's been a consistent product that's been around. But what you mentioned earlier about landscape, that's a huge because people started going in and saying, you know, I I got to open up and I use live view when I'm shooting landscape so I can focus these lenses. And I'm like another really bizarre. And these are with a, a demographic like baby boomers, like 60 and above. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, this is a whole new area for this stuff. And sure enough, they're using it once again for landscapers. So the loop will now go into another realm. We talked about, remember when these, the 5D Mark II came around? Remember that camera, the Canon 5D? Mm -hmm. Video camera. And people went nuts. People were putting $50,000 worth of junk on this camera to make it work like a video camera. It's like, I'd say, go buy a video camera. What are you doing? You know what I'm talking about. You were, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you guys are, but this is basically what was happening back then. So um, they had a massive thing with they got they put it into like Tarantino's hands, didn't they? And they did uh, a lot of that, yeah. Doing ER and stuff with Everybody it. Was, yeah. the latest, greatest, the flavor of the month. 
they put these DPs, you're absolutely right. And then they would show up at NAB and they'd have a 5D Mark II. And then there was like 50 companies making rigs, making every imaginable thing for this. But what we did is we provided this little sled and this little sled, I'm showing it to you off the camera. This little mm -hmm. sled holds the loop into place over the LCD screen on a DSLR and it's from the bottom. So you take the quarter 20 and then you replace it with another quarter 20. It's all beautiful a company named Custom Brackets. I don't even know if they're still around, but he made some great stuff for years. But this is all like burn it, not burnished, but uh, tumbled, beautiful feel to it. And for a price point of about 140, 150 US, you get the base plate and the loop. So theoretically, you can now connect to the camera and use it as a video, right? Because otherwise, this is what you're trying to do. Hey, Sam, let's go shoot some video. Oh, let's go on the beach. Let's shoot some rocks. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, it, you need, think about it. You're connecting to the camera. And what's good about this is quick, quick release in and out. You have all three axes to adjust. So it fits on all the DSLRs from the 1DX Mark III, that big one, all the way down to this little guy. But what's great about it is you can just sit here. Now I'm a tripod. You got three, three points of contention, right? One, two, my head is three. Now I can just really see. Plus you can see the screen and you can focus and you can operate the camera. Now, this comes in two other iterations, which I'll show you. Um, pretty straightforward piece. You see how it works here, and it integrates through the bottom. We went through the top, and this is when it gets wacky. The top, this is called hood crane. See this little monstrosity? <laughs> I shouldn't say that because it really came on to be something that is very appropriate for people that can quickly take it up and out of the way, right? So you're, and then it pivots. So it's using the hot shoe, but we're betting that when you're using video or live view, you're outside, you're not worrying about the hot shoe. You're not doing flash photography when you're shooting video. Right, mm -hmm. Sam? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this piece up and about, it's right around the same price point, but once again, it can drop in and it has three different axes to put it in, but it's beautiful. And it keeps this free because a lot of people have other types of, configuration maybe it's arca swiss or something like that which we have never put an arca swiss out we probably should but this will give you that capability of putting whatever you want on the bottom so we don't disturb the bottom it's there you want it out of the way it's up it's out it's mm. ready to go so once again 150 us on this price point um fairly straightforward it's for people who want to go back and forth shooting stills too you know they want to get back to this get back to their eyepiece. So that's what we call the hood crane, okay? This is a Nikon Z6, okay? Hello mirrorless. Yeah, one of those, <laughs> beautiful. Okay, a little cage there too, or Arca Swiss or something, yeah. Um, but that's where we could, we started playing around with this one. If you look at the bottom of this, it's similar to this guy, but it's very cut down because of the, you know, these are narrow bodies. There's not much camera here. But the bottom line is, here's the, the, the contrast. Mirrorless now gives you the ability, as you know, to look through the viewfinder. And it's live. So you can theoretically say, Bob, don't need your loop anymore when I'm doing playback or doing video because I'm going to use this. I said, well, that's great. You can, but it's still the size of a postage stamp, pixelated like crazy. I would still prefer to use a larger screen. That's kind of what we talk about when we go through mirrorless, folks, because you'll say that. Oh, I can just look at my thing. Well, if you're happy with that. That's cool. But if you want to see a little bit more, get a little more real estate, you go with approach like this. Same type of underneath approach. Quarter 20 gets replaced. We have another quarter 20. This little piece pops out and it just kind of goes away if you want it away. Mm. You can still use it as your go to piece when you're doing stills. But what's really cool is I want to show you one thing. Out of anything, you should just buy this because of this. See this? This little upright here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. There. Okay, watch. Oops. There's an L brack, L uh I don't even can't even like an Allen head. That's where that's the, the wrench is. See the wrench right there? It fits mm -hmm. up in this little arm. It's it's spring loaded, and people don't even know where it is. I'm sorry, I'm too low. 
Hello. <laughs> so back as a resident. Right. There you go. That's it right there. But basically, it's a a piece for the mirrorless world. Um, I think it makes sense, and it's just what people are into. I think. I think that's all I have for live view. So you have the potential for live view and the potential for video, and both of these uh, options are available to cover that live view need. So I well, think I said enough on that. Can can I just ask you quickly about the eye cups? Uh, because oh, I know yeah. there's there's variations of that for for eye, for people wearing eyeglasses or not wearing eyeglasses and different fittings. That's right. What we did, as you see, this is what it comes with when you purchase it. We sell these eye cups separately, and all that does is just replace the whole unit. You can pull this right off. So. You can just replace this one here with this one and put it on there. And these are sold separately. But that's a good idea because it not only fits eyeglasses, but it will fit the contour of your head, which I'm going to talk about in a second here with hood eyes. But yes, that's a separate item. Good point. That can be purchased separately. Yeah. H T E. H T E. I think they're like 20 bucks. But that's a good enhancement too to put that on there with this link. And then you got a nice combination. Everything's available okay. uh, through Photospeed, photospeed.com. Uh, yep. there's, there's a good amount of hoodman on there. And we're going to do more and more about the product videos, little displays and demos, so you guys can see this stuff in action. Um, but I would just finish with everyone, uh, if you've enjoyed what we do, just subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel as well. Every Thursday, there's new videos out with uh, people like Bob, with other photographers talking about printing, talking about everything camera related. Uh, but guys, I think we'll wrap it up there. Tim, thanks for your time. As Thank always. You <laughs> and uh, Bob, take care over there. And uh, they'll certainly see you coming with your colors. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. Cheers, everybody. Okay, Goodbye care. for now. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.